Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to go into chapter 7, part 3 of Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. Um, I know that it's being stretched out so much, but it's because this chapter is extremely long because it's getting right into the good juicy bits of the beginning of the book. And I know my hair is kind of a mess. We're just going to have to deal with it. Anyways, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button. And yeah, continue to show me some love and support. Um, there is one person that I am definitely shouting out in this video. And it is a person that I work with. And uh, he told me last week um, that he hopes that my channel blows up. And if it does, that I needed to quit my day job because, you know, why not? Um, but he knows who he is. I don't know if he would want me to say his name, but if he does, he'll let me know because, you know. But uh, thank you for all that support. And it was really great being able to have someone from work be so supportive of what I do outside of work. Um, but yeah, um, Anyways, I'm still on my mom's porch. If you saw in the last video, I was sitting over in that corner, but this time I'm over here. It's just because the sun is so much in my face over there. And if you can't tell, I'm already, I mean, I'm tan here, but I'm starting to get a little burned or that might be me breaking out. I have no idea. Oh, and my mom's dog is the background. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's get right into this video. I hope that you guys enjoy it and continue to enjoy these videos, but yeah. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off the video now. You have been warned. Alrighty. Chapter 7, Part 3 of A Good Girl's Guide. Not A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Good Girl, Bad Blood. Oh my gosh. Alrighty. File name, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Season 2. Interview with Connor Reynolds, Dot Wave. Recording. You need to stop chewing on your nails, though, Connor. You need to stop chewing on your nails, though. The mic's picking it up. Sorry, there's something walking around in the woods. I don't know if it's my mom's other dog or not, but that's kind of creepy. Because now it's just stopped. Anyways, back to the book. Sorry. So I wanted to focus on a comment you made earlier that Jamie had been acting strangely the past few weeks. Short-tempered and distant. Can you give me specific instances and dates? Yeah, I'll try. It's been the past couple of months, really, that Jamie's mood seemed has seemed kind of erratic. He was fine, just normal Jamie. And then at the start of March, he seemed really miserable and quiet, would hardly talk to anyone, a black cloud hanging over him, to use my mom's words. Your mom seems to think Jamie was upset when Nat Silva got a new boyfriend and they'd been going getting so close. Could that have explained Jamie's mood then? Yeah, maybe that probably matches up time-wise. So he was like that a couple of weeks and then suddenly he was okay again, smiling and joking, spending a lot of time on his phone. We have a no phones with Netflix rule, otherwise mom just goes on Facebook and we have to rewind when she misses stuff. But I noticed Jamie was always on his and not just on Reddit. It looked like he was typing, talking to someone. And he seemed to be in a good mood during this period? Yeah, definitely. For like a week and a half, he was good, chatty, smiley, normal Jamie. And then he switched back again, just as suddenly. I know exactly which day it was because we all went to see the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie and went out on March 27th. Before we left, Jamie comes out of his room and says he's not coming. And I could tell his voice. He was trying to not cry, but my dad told him he had to come because we'd already bought the tickets. They got into a fight about it, and in the end, Jamie did come. I sat next to him, could see him crying during the film. He didn't think anyone could see because it was dark. Do you know why he was so upset? No idea. He carried on like that for a few days, locking himself in his room straight after work. One night, I asked him if he was okay, and he just said, yeah, fine. Though we both knew he wasn't. Jamie and me, we've always been 
always told each other everything, everything. Up until recently, I don't know what happened to us. And after those few days, well, then he kind of went back to normal. He seemed happy, not like happy happy, but better than before. He was on his phone the whole time. I just wanted us to be close again, to play around like we always used to. So one day when he was typing away on his phone a few weeks ago, I ran past and grabbed it saying, who are you texting then? It was a joke. I was teasing. I wasn't going to look and he always does it to me, but Jamie didn't take it like that. He snapped, pushed me up against the wall, and I until I dropped his phone. I was never going to actually look at it. It was just a joke, but when he had me up against the wall like that, it, it didn't feel like my brother anymore. He said sorry afterwards, said something about privacy, but it was, you know, it felt wrong, and I've heard him up really late on the phone and the fact every night the past two weeks or so and a couple of times over the past week I heard him sneak out of his room once mom and dad had gone to bed I don't know where he went he did the last week on the night of his birthday I heard him sneak out before midnight I waited up listening he came back around 2 and when I mentioned it the next morning he said I must have been hearing things and I woke up randomly at 3 a.m. this Monday night well Tuesday morning I guess I'm pretty sure it was Jamie sneaking back in that woke me up I see but this is not normal, Jamie. You know him, Pip. He's usually so easygoing and calm, but now his mood is suddenly up and down. He keep, He's keeping secrets and sneaking out, getting angry. Something's wrong. I know it. My mom showed uh, you the text, right? She sent it to Jamie around 1230 last night and still it's still not delivered. His phone's been off since before then or broken. Oh, the noises were birds. <laughs> Anyways, we're out of battery. No, it was almost fully charged. I know because when we were in the car, I asked Jamie the time and he showed me his screen. It was at 88% or something. It's a newish phone. It wouldn't die that quickly. And why would he turn it off when he was about out and about? Doesn't make sense. Yes. The text not delivering at the time certainly is significant. What do you think it means? I can't speculate until I know more. It means he's in trouble, doesn't it? You are ju you just don't want to say it. It's that someone's hurt him or taken him. Connor, we don't know anything yet. I'm not ruling anything out, but we can't settle on conclusions without evidence. That's not how this works. Let's move on to yesterday. Can you talk me through your day, your interactions with Jamie? Anything significant? Um, what? Well, there was something. Connor, you won't tell my mom, will you? Remember what you asked of me? When I release this, it will go out to hundreds of thousands of people. Your mom is going to hear it, so whatever it is, you need to tell me, and what, then you need to tell her. Shit, yeah, it's just, okay, so Jamie and my mom, they got on really well, they always have, I guess you might call him a mama's boy, they just click, but Jamie and dad have a tricky relationship, Jamie said to me before that he thinks dad hates him, that dad's constantly disappointed by him, they don't really talk anything through, they just let things build up, they occasionally explode into big arguments, and then once that's done, and the awkwardness is gone, they go back to normal, and the cycle resets, well, they had one of their big arguments yesterday when at like 5.30, mom was at the supermarket. The argument ended before she got back, so she doesn't know about it. I was listening from the stairs. Was it? What was it about? The usual things they fight about. Dad telling Jamie he needs to suck it up and sort out his life. And that he and mom won't always be there to pick up the pieces. Jamie said he was trying that... He was trying that. Dad never notices when he's trying. He pres presumes Jamie's going to fail anyway. I couldn't hear the whole fight, but I remember Dad saying something like, We aren't a bank. We are your parents. I don't know what that was about. I guess maybe Dad brought up that he thinks Jamie should pay rent to still live here. Mom thinks that's ridiculous and would never allow it, but Dad always... Dad's always going on about how else will he learn. The last thing that they said to each other before Mom came back was, What? Dad said, you're a waste of space, and Jamie said, I know. Is that what everyone was quiet on the drive to the memorial? Your mom picked up on it? Yeah. Oh, God, she's going to be so upset when I tell her. You should tell her tonight after I'm gone. I guess. So back to last night, you arrive at the memorial, and you go to off to your to find our friends and Jamie goes off to find Nat but then Jamie comes up to you at one point when Zach and I were talking to my new neighbors Jamie came to sp and spoke to you yeah what did he say he apologized said sorry about the argument with dad he knows I hate when they fight and he told me that after the memorial he was going to Nat to Silva's house for a bit spend the evening with her I think they thought it was the only right to be in the company of someone else who knew Sal and Andy 
He said he'd be back home that night, though, and he, as he walked off, the last thing he said to me was, see you later. I don't think he lied to my face like that if he knew he wasn't coming back, but Mom and I called Nat this morning. Nat never saw Jamie after the memorial. She doesn't even know where he is. And where did you go after the memorial? Well, me and Zach didn't want to go to the calamity party with Aunt and Lauren because they ignore everyone else anyway. So I went back to Zach's and we, we played Fortnite. So now the world knows that then. And later, Zach dropped me off at home. What time? We left Zach's just around after 11.30, so I must have been back around 12. I was tired and went straight to bed, didn't even brush my teeth, and Jamie never came back. I went to bed without a second thought about Jamie. It's so stupid, really, how you take things like this for granted. I was stupid. I thought he'd come home. He was supposed to come home, and now he's... And that is the end of Chapter 7. I will see you guys in the next video for Chapter 8. Bye!